just south of the Dummer here, about within a gunshot of Bethlehem Castle, about 140 years ago, John Millington Singh was born. And in, by the early 1900s, he had already become an established favorite playwright in the Abbey Theatre. And he was also at the time in love with a rising young Abbey actress, Molly Allwood. <clears throat> we meet him now when he is in the throes of trying to work through the elements of the plot, which are very clear, but a whole range of wonderful West of Ireland characters which he was hoping to incorporate into what was to be his most famous play. Oh, no, no, no. That's just the title of the story. I, 
he was using as a platform and you played. No. No, the murder is much too dark and grim, all <laughs> If you want me to be happy with this young fella, then yourself and himself and this play would want to be a lot more lively, more, more dare. The likes of the stories that I need to hear about, the likes of Danny Sullivan, not the eye from a peel, or Marcus Quinn, God rest him, got six months for maim and news. I feel like the like of that, that has great bravery and danger and, and wonder about him. Yes, yes. That's just the sort of excitement I'm looking for. Full of laughter and drama and tears. But I feel like I must get the right names in my mind for you and, and the young fellow that killed his father. So that I could, well, I could get to know you both better. And bring you both forward into the play. Just the right Christian names for you. You, you know, the, the names you call each other. Well, I always did have a fancy that someday I would meet a man with a grand quality name. The likes of what you'd hear on the great powers and potentates of France or Spain. Like Cornelius, or Constantine, or Christopher Columbus, or Alexander. <laughs> Turn on you in the end. I don't know, but the odds are, the odds are against me. 
and gave him the one the egg. It wasn't turned against you, Christina. It wasn't myself. That was the only one that took your part. But with a woman the like of me, that buried her children and destroyed her man. Well, sure, Widow Grimm, the moment you heard that there was a young fella here, weren't you gasping with the rage you had raised in the hill beyond to look at his face? Oh, isn't that a great temptation in a man to kill his dad? And it's the likes of you and me, young fella, that the penny ports in an August fair will be singing. And you will cast a lovely playboy. I'm going to tell you after saying it was only begging and receipt. And what would I care? Sure, if you brought me a thrift of chosen females, standing in their shift maybe from this place to the eastern world. It was begging only that I was seeking. Before I met you, Christina, I had strange dreams of fine, fiery fellows with your words. Fellows with great rages in them when their tempers were roused. Now you forgetting Peggy might get her after making a good bargain to be married. The way we're only waiting these days on Father Riley's dispensation from the bishops or the courts of Rome. Stop tormenting me with Father Riley, Shawnee Kyo. Go on then to Father Riley and let him put you in the Holy Brotherhood and leave me be. And have you no mind to my rage of passion and the holy dispensation? And the drift of her, as I mean, and the boy of me. It's a poor girl who'd marry your life, I'm thinking. And you think you're a likely bow to go straight along with the shiny Sundays of the opening new year. When it's sooner on a bullock's liver you put a poor girl thinking than on the lily or the rose. Well, it's a queer story about thinking a dumpty tramp from the highways of the road. And there was Shawnee, was willing to give you a half a ticket to the Western States. And a new hat, and a new breeches with a double seat, and a new coat. And the blessings of Father Riley itself, if you quit off from this now and leave us in peace. And you know she wouldn't suit you at all. Well, and she with the devil's own temper, the way you'd be stranding one another in a score of days. Now you take yourself off from this Sean Kyo, or I'll be adding murder to my deeds this day. Sure, it was only her I was seeing. I put this torment only in her life. And she a girl, the tiny moon of, of midnight, she fight to meet facing southwards on the heats of Peel. And I myself, a girl, was tempted to go sailing the seas, till I'd marry a Jew man with ten kegs of gold. And I above many a day, oftentimes the great spirits, abroad in the sunshine, Darn in a soccer, stitch in a shift. And odd times look at the hookers, trawlers, and schooners, and think of the gallant, hairy fellas that have drifted beyond. And I myself, long years in the low. So, the way you see it set up before you is that neither myself nor herself will have Christy to her own. And the friend can be nothing. That will be so. You see, between the lot of them, you've turned them from a, from a frightened fugitive into a, a likely gaffer at the end of it all. Huh. Huh. And the way sure, that I have gone wrong to a romping lifestyle from this hour to the dawning of the judgment day. Oh. The widow Quinn was right when she called him the walking playboy of the Western world. I've lost him, surely. I've lost the only playboy of the Western world. What's that, Peggy? Peggy, what's that you call them just now? The playboy of the Western world. Well, that certainly beats murder. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, then. That's it. The playboy. 